So my name is Heather, like the weather, but slightly better. Oh, I just made that and I really like it. And basically, I'm here today because uh, I believe that volunteering can change your life completely. And for me, that's happened in so many ways. So the Kindness Hub, which is this little beautiful logo, is my social enterprise. The Kindness Hub is an international movement of kindness, who would have thunk it, that actually helps people to connect and overcome barriers that stop them from wanting to be their ultimate self. So for example, if you are in the street or you want to strike up a conversation with a stranger, who finds this difficult? Show of hands. Great. Who's ever felt nervous walking into a room before where you don't know anyone? Nice. Who felt nervous walking in today? Anyone? Be proud, be proud. Yeah, yeah. My Zoom homies, I know you're there. I'm going to grab this, thank you. The point is, is that everyone feels nervous sometimes and there are ways to be able to overcome this, to get the most out of life, right? To get the most out of our relationships, out of our careers, out of our volunteering opportunities, out of our studies and out of our experiences. And in this room right now, correct me if I'm wrong, we are all international students, yes? Hands up if you're an international student. Hands up if you're a human. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> right, what? Right? We're all people, well, myself, I'm, from a, I'm from born in Sydney, Australia, but we're in this room, the majority, from somewhere else. And I think that's very, very special because in order to, my clicker doesn't work. Hey, in order to be able to collaborate and express our creativity, we have to be part of a community. I fully believe that. And coming to a new place, it can be so challenging, right? A different culture to be able to understand how that works. Has anyone experienced this so far? No one? Great. Where are you from? Hong Kong. Hong Kong? Colombia. Colombia. Nepal. Nepal. Germany. Germany. Japan. Japan. India. India. Bangladesh. Bangladesh. China. 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 Vietnam. Vietnam. Macau. 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 Malaysia. Malaysia. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Indonesia. Indonesia. Oh, this is great, guys. Oman. Oman. Oman? Oh, yes. My friend's from Oman. Where else? Did we miss anyone? South Korea. South Korea. Cambodia. Cambodia. Philippines. Burma. Wow. Oh, anyone on Zoom? Are you typing something? Where are you from? Indonesia. South Korea. Yes. Have we missed anyone? Taiwan. Taiwan. Yes. <laughs> Kenya. We are from so many different and diverse places. It is ridiculous. There is so much diversity in this room that I seriously mean world domination as an actual fact. <laughs> because when you allow yourself the space to be fully who you are, that creates ripples. Volunteering. This is the definition by Cambridge. Volunteering is a person who does something, especially helping other people willingly and without being forced or paid to do it. Does this resonate? You're like, yeah, great. Volunteering can mean something different to every single one of us. How many countries do we have in the room earlier? Like at least 20. It's something different in every single place. Just like having eye contact with someone is different in every single culture. Right? Put your hand up if in your culture having eye contact with someone is a sign of disrespect. If you're like holding eye contact, with hands all the way up, right? You're like, don't do that. Put your hand up if holding eye contact with someone is like, oh, this is how they know that I'm listening and I respect them completely. Yeah. Put your hand up if in your culture it's really normal to ask your lecturer or your teacher to go to dinner to show them how much you appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Hands all the way up. Right? There's things that are different in different places. It's completely different. So in my background, so you know as well, I'm an ex-student of UTS. I have a, um, a, what do I have? (laughs) I have a bachelor in business and I was also an academic for the university and I also was a consultant for the university in helping to create more experiential learning opportunities. So I've been at this university quite a bit also for Sydney University. And so I know that when we are working with so many diverse people, so often in the world, we just put one definition up and say, this is the answer. (laughs) This is what volunteering is. 
But that's not how the world works, is it? It's not. The world is very different and diverse. And for me, in my volunteering life and experience, it's looked like this. I'm a boat person what is a national charity that I was a part of where we ran financial literacy programs for refugees in and out of immigration detention in Australia in partnership with Westpac. And it was started from my friend that I met here at UTS and we were just a whole group of friends that were like, we're gonna make the world better. <laughs> what can we do? Volunteering for me has looked like running scout leadership programs. It's looked like traveling to Hawaii and running youth programs. It's looked like being in Nepal and building a school and trekking through the Himalayan mountains. It's looked like getting to meet people from all across the planet in their most beautiful reflections of themselves. And for me, that's vulnerability. I think that when someone is vulnerable, when they show up as this is just who I am, that's the most powerful thing on planet Earth because it is way harder to just pretend like you don't exist, right? Like, like, sorry, it's way easier to pretend like you don't exist than it is to say, hey, this is who I am and this is what I'm scared of and this is what I'm worried about and this is what's happened to me in my life. And one of the secret ingredients to be able to create deep connections with someone is proximity. Distance, right? It's how close that you are with someone. So right now we're in close proximity. In this room, we're all in close proximity with each other. On Zoom, we're in proximity with each other because we're connected. And when we create opportunities for ourselves to be in proximity with someone, that is when you allow for conversations to begin. But if you're not putting yourself in opportunities where you're actually going up to someone and being like, hey, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> how you going? Doing fine. What's your name? Jan. Jan. Yeah. I'm Heather like forever. <laughs> right? If you're not doing that, then you're never going to be able to have that connection. You could sit in this room for the next four weeks of the program and never meet a new person that you actually have a deep connection with. But when you have two people who are committed to creating a deep connection, oh, that's magic. You're like, but you have to tell that person that you want to be their friend. <laughs> It doesn't have to be as creepy as the way I do it, right? <laughs> you can tell that person that you want to, you know, be their friend. And um, this is from a networking perspective as well, right? This is for our careers. This is for what we do with our family. This is for how successful we want to be. As you can see on the screens here, there are some colorful cards. Now, the blue card says, this is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Be like Jeff. How? have a can-do attitude, and it's a picture of a can, because Jeff's a can, that's why he's got a can-do attitude. You're welcome, you're so welcome. <laughs> Turns out I'm not funny in any language, that's okay. <laughs> and on the left are handwritten cards. Now, why am I showing you this? These cards on the right are the ones I've been handing out to all of you, right? This is my business. These are kindness cards that are in over 30 countries that people hand out to strangers in order to help them to have a great day and also to build their own self-confidence. Because sometimes it can be really awkward knowing how to approach someone and it, you just, so you just don't do it. All right, great. Everyone comfy? Anyone need anything? No? All right, let me just frame you up for what we're going to be covering over the next uh, in like hour and a bit before lunch. We're going to be talking about conflict resolution and boundaries and consent. We're going to be talking about what it means to be able to present in our bodies we're going to, and how to be a public speaker, how to just to have confidence while speaking. Uh, we're also going to be talking about um, something else that I just forgot, but it's, it'll come. Okay, write this down. Other pe people's emotions are not my responsibility. Other people's emotional, well, let's go, emotional responses are not my responsibility. So often we hold ourselves back because we think that the way that we show up is going to change someone else's experience for the negative. Right? Like we don't talk to someone new because we think they will think that's weird. Or we don't apply for a job because we think that they will think we're not good enough. Or we don't confront someone because we think they will be mad at us for doing that. 
Do you see how it's a whole list of ways that we're stopping ourselves from being in full expression? Step number one, write this down. Step number one, what is the objective? What do you actually want from the situation? Then you go to step two. Step two is put yourself in the other person's shoes. That's called empathy, right? Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Step number three is decide how you want to feel before you have a conversation with someone. Decide how you want to feel before you have the conversation with someone. So step number four is when you're having this conversation, right? First thing is talk about the obvious, right? What's, what's the problem? Talk about the actual problem, but in solved terms. These are the three things that I think are the ultimate ingredients to success. Patience, humility, and kindness to others and self. Patience with myself, patience with other people. Humility, knowing that there are things that I don't know, and there always will be. And having kindness to others and to myself when things don't go the way I thought that they might. What is the legacy that you're leaving behind? How do you wanna be remembered through these volunteering experiences you're gonna have. We often think that our mind tells our body how we feel, but it's not the case. We can also use our body to tell our mind how we feel. Our body has the power to impact the way that we feel. If you put a smile on your face, it's literally sending chemicals to your brain to help you to be like, we're happy, <laughs> we're good. It works both ways. Our body language is so important. Everyone, please stand up. Please stand up. And go. Confident? Showing someone you're confident? Are your arms crossed right now? Are they in your pockets? Are they behind you or in front of you? When I talk about something, what do I do? I use it like this. It looks like I'm a swimmer. <laughs> I'm using my hands to include. So when you put your palm up, you're including people. If I put my palm down, I'm like I'm making a point. You see how that's like me making a point? Like it's, it's certain. Whereas I put my hands up, it's like we're all included together. Focus is so important. Where focus goes, energy flows. That I'm sure you could think of in your own life that may look like bad luck, but are actually good luck. And I invite you as you go through your volunteering experience, as you go through your experience of being here in Australia, to look at what your focus is. Because even when the unthinkable happens, you have the capacity and the ability and the choice to focus on what you want your life to mean and who you want to be remembered as and by. Words, oh my gosh, words. Words shape our reality. I don't care what language it's in. Your words shape your reality. Whether they are inside of your brain or outside of your brain, your words shape your reality. If you say, to, how, someone says, how are you? And you say, good, right? Or if someone says, how are you? And you say, I'm amazing. Do they feel different? Yes. So different, such a big difference. So on your piece of paper right now, I want you to just write down Three I am statements. I am smart. I am joyful. I am whatever you want. I am intelligent. I am a badass. <laughs> I am a leader. I contribute. Whatever it is. I want to see in the chat too, please, friends. My invitation to you is to please take a fresh post-it note. And you're only going to have it like about a minute. And then we're going to go to lunch break. And I want you to make your own kindness card. So the cards that I've been giving out that have funny jokes and like beautiful sayings and whatever it is, like this one says, it's a picture of eggs and it says, even when you feel a little scrambled, just remember you're egg extraordinary. You're welcome for that. You're welcome. I want you to write down something that you wish someone would say to you on your worst day. What's something you wish you would say? And during the lunch break, I'm going to get you to go and give that to somebody else that you don't know. So if you put in the code 34460052, it's up on the screen. 34460052.
0052. So literally just Google mentee.com and that'll come up. So I'm just checking how many have worked or are working in Australia in terms of your experience. That's paid or unpaid. Even if it's a project that you did in class with a company or an organization. I want to check how much experience you have. So that's quite a lot of you that are saying, yes, that's brilliant. I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be able to contribute to the conversation. Next question. What comes to your mind when somebody says networking? Because it sounds like you guys have done hates with Heather this morning. <laughs> Connections. That's right. That's my favorite one. Computer. Okay. People. Net worth. Cool. I wanted to get a little bit about where you're at, so that's why I was asking those questions. So in this session, thankfully, Heather's covered a lot of stuff, so I can go through mine pretty quickly before we get to the end of my session. So really, learning from each other and from this morning is what we've just done, and then we'll go into the networking side of things, and then we'll look at relationship building, because networking is actually part of relationship building. And then to practice all that, because you've done a lot of practice with each other already, we are having UTS alumni that are former international students that are coming. Hopefully, they'll all turn up. Your values. What are the things that you, values, that you value? It's really important in that sense. I kind of, when I came as an international student, there was a lot of these words I had no clue about. Um, but one of the things that I really value is, is teamwork and togetherness and oneness. Um, and then empathy. I've heard that quite a lot this morning. It's a really great thing to have empathy. Sometimes it's hard because, you know, you're coming from a different place and you're trying to understand somebody and you just can't understand them. Empathy is really important. When you put yourself in that person's position, it puts you in a better frame of mind. And then your interpersonal skills, talking to each other, how you handle that. Public speaking. Heather did a really great job in terms of the posture and your body language when you do that. Active listening, that's kind of something that you've spoken about as well, yeah? That's a really thing, uh, easy thing to say. Active listening, and you can go through the rules of active listening, but the practice is really important so that genuine interest in somebody is actively listening so that you can read what they're trying to say to you. Because sometimes it's not what they're saying, it's what they're not saying, yeah? So that's why it's really important that you're actively listening. And when you're thinking about that 80-20 rule, 80% has to be about them. Ask them questions. Focus on them. Another thing that Heather was talking about before. And then keeping conversations balanced. Yeah? So sometimes it's really hard to start a conversation. Like I said, use your name. Use yourself. But there's the, the form. is like an acronym for... You can start off with family or friends. I can't talk about my family. They drive me crazy. So I get into like a uh, mood with them. But I love them dearly and I wouldn't know what to do without them. Yeah? You can talk about friends because I've just talked about these guys that I've worked with before. Colleagues and friends. You talk about fun things as well. And also what's, what motivates them when you're talking to somebody. What is it that you're at that event about or you're in a class or you're on the same bus and something happens? So think about what is their motivation. Focus on the person and be there for them. Sometimes that's really hard when you're really stressed out or you're really tired. And that's where that empathy comes back in. One of the silver linings that comes out of the pandemic is the accessibility that people can have. If you can't make it to a class, you can do it online. If you're stuck overseas, you can study at UTS still. But practice to have your video on. Because you're a human being. You're talking to another human being. The reason that I'm saying this is because you'll go into this volunteering opportunity. Some of you will do it virtually. So be careful about what is online. That's your brand that, that Heather was talking about. The way to think about it, because some people I think have too much time and just start telling people off online or putting them down online. Think about it in the sense, would you do what you are doing online if it was in person? So self-awareness, self-regulation, that, that's the empathy that's there. That goes back to your social skills as well, yeah? Your relationship management, what you're like around other people. 
And that comes back to what we keep talking about, your motivation. So your passion for doing this volunteering is really important. Because when you're talking about career development as well, self-awareness is so key. But I guess those tips around relationship building, one of the things that's really important is remembering people's names. So I've got an acronym there that's CARS, yeah? You concentrate. So again, back to that focus on the person. You associate, for example. There's something about them that will make you remember or that was, there was a situation that you were in that will help you remember who they were. And then as I keep saying, be curious. So in that curiosity, ask questions. When anyone starts in our team, I kind of, you know, say there's no stupid questions. Because everyone's coming from different angles. So don't assume things, ask questions. Okay, final tips, only because I want to give you guys a lot of time with, with the alumni that are here again. I love this, this, this quote from uh, Maya Angelou, American activist, writer, um, lots of different things she's done. And she talks about, you know, what I've learned is that people will forget what you said, maybe forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. So then you have to be kind to yourself. Take the time to learn when you go into this volunteering opportunity. But as Heather was saying in terms of the kindness, yeah? Treat others like how you want to be treated. Okay. I want you guys to help each other out, which is why I've got this up there. Because you can be in small groups. Sorry, it's back to the same Mentimeter. Menti.com. I can get you to do it as a group. But I want you guys to learn from each other and share what you might be curious to know. Hello, everyone. My name is Victor. I've got a, hello. I've got a confession to make. I'm pretty nervous. It's the first time I've spoken to this size of group face to face in the last two years. But that's okay. Um, you know, we're all here to learn and be vulnerable. And part of actually this journey is to actually be vulnerable and actually learn about yourself. So let me tell you a bit more about us. Um, this is like a one slideshow that captures my career and my background. Um, I was an immigrant here um, when I was nine and I grew up here. So I call myself a bit of banana, yellow on the outside and white on the inside. Uh, when I first came here, our family had nothing. So we had no connections, no friends. And we thought the best way for us to kind of really meet values aligned people and also contribute back to the community that gave us this opportunity to be here is to volunteer. And ever since then, we've been doing a lot of volunteering every month at community centers, um, going to soup kitchen, helping people pick up trash, you name it, we've done it all. And we found that that's to be a, a lifelong kind of tradition that we want to upkeep. And that's really kind of the, what shapes my, my career so far. Then I spent about 10 years in corporate Australia, a uh, variety of experience, but mostly around kind of management consulting and, and change management. And that told me one thing, which is I really, really, really want to be in the not-for-profit sector and really help people directly. And that's when I spent another 10 years working for a variety of not-for-profits. And I found one problem on both sides, which is in corporate Australia, there are a lot of people who want to help with skills and expertise that they don't really know where to go. So most of the time you end up going somewhere on a bus probably four weeks before Christmas and you end up painting the same wall that another group of people have just painted maybe three weeks ago. And on the other side with the not-for-profits, they're actually doing amazing work, but they don't have enough resources and talent to actually scale their solution. Got two hands. <laughs> Excuse this technical difficulty. If it was on Zoom, we would okay. turn off these cameras right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he's on. Check, check, check. Check, check. check. There we go. Now you can hear me. Hello. All good. Um, and what we found is that the, the solution is actually quite simple. We need to mobilize and engage volunteers like yourselves who've got the expertise and skills to those not for profit that actually need your help at the right time. And that is why we actually created an organization called Community, where we're trying to connect, engage, and mobilize volunteers like yourself to solve different social issues at scale. OK, so I mentioned before, this is our social enterprise, and this is our mission. But what we essentially do, we're an aggregator. So think of us like a LinkedIn, but for social good. And currently, we've got over 800 not-for-profits on, um, on our platform. 
and we've got 20,000 corporate volunteers who are actually trying to do good at the same time. And this is kind of the synergy that we see in community and in Auslib, and that's why we're kind of working together to make this happen. This is going to be a great way for you to actually understand the Australian landscape. And I think there's no better opportunity than to really kind of start from understanding the social issues that the everyday Australians might be experiencing and actually trying to do your best to help. But before we start and tell you more about the not-for-profits, I want to give you a snapshot of what volunteering has been like in Australia for the last two years. So, um, volunteering used to be a very vibrant sector. Um, one in three Australians would have volunteered regular, on a regular basis. Most of the time it's formal, sometimes it's like you know, volunteering for your soccer club. But in the last two years, because of the pandemic, that's actually drastically declined. Um, to a point where we, one in three, it's now turned into more like a one in six. And in total, we've lost about two million Australian volunteers because people are so anxious and so fearful of the lockdown and, and the virus itself that they don't really want to come back. And that presents a huge problem because most of the not-for-profits in Australia are actually completely run by volunteers. Without them, they literally shut down. So we've seen more charities actually closing doors than we've ever seen before in the last two years. The good thing, though, is that there are a lot of charities who have pivoted and survived, and those who have survived have actually changed the way that they engage with volunteers. And I'm going to just put two jargons on the table, which is there's new ways of volunteering called skill-based volunteering, and virtual volunteering, which is actually what community is specialised in. So what we've found is in the last two years, most not-for-profit actually wants to actually do a hybrid model of the service delivery. Even the soup kitchen have tried to do it in a virtual way, whether it's actually like an Uber-like app and get people to actually use the mobile phone and say, I need a meal, and then somehow coordinate the delivery. That's actually been something that's brand spanking new, and it's actually made these not-for-profit organisations a lot more efficient to run in the long run. That's just one of many hundreds of examples we can give you. But it kind of proves the, the effectiveness and the impact that you can create by volunteering your skills and expertise. Even at a graduate or university level, there are many skills and uh, sectors out there that actually need your help because most not for profit have been run on a shoestring budget for the last 20, 30, 40 years. The other thing I want to talk about is that um, virtual volunteering is really a thing right now. Um, at the peak of the pandemic last year, most of the face-to-face -face engagement have stopped, and even now, only 15% of that has come back. So what we've been able to find and source for you as part of the Osley program this time, they're mostly virtual volunteering opportunities, but the not-for-profit organizations are very open to you to coordinate a face-to-face -face interaction on top of that, so that you have that flexibility, especially for those who are connecting with us remotely around the country, to actually fulfill your volunteering experience, both remotely and in person, depending on what your needs are and what your skills might be. So just keep that in mind, especially for the next few weeks. Don't know what your schedule might be. Don't know how far you live from the charity that you're actually going to be, be kind of paired with. Keep that in mind. Most not-for-profit are now very flexible about how you engage with them. Now, I'm going to spend the next kind of 11 minutes to do a speed run of the 11 not-for-profits that we've actually matched you on. And then we're going to talk about who are you with, which group are you in, what their needs. But what we want to do is actually pair up everyone to an opportunity where your skills align and the courses that you've indicated that you're interested in are also aligned to the not-for-profit organization themselves. So once you know who your not-for-profit is, I would suggest knowing three things. Really understand why they're doing what they're doing, the why. Understand who they're actually targeting. And depending on who you're actually trying to support, the content you're trying to create, the solution you're actually trying to think up might be different or should be different. And then lastly, understand the project scope. So we've had a first go at trying to scope out what the, what the um, challenge is. But at the end of the day, once you're actually in it and you're talking to the non-for-profit representative themselves, make sure you go in there and just ask as many questions as you can. Now, the non-for-profits know that you guys are going to come armed with questions. Even if it's a, I don't know what you guys do, can you tell me from your point of view what do you actually do? Because getting the scope right and really getting the ask perfect is really the first step.